And today there's action from three London First Division clubs, from the team at the top of the First Division and from the team at the bottom. A full survey then, beginning with our main match, the London Derby Spurs against West Ham. And Moore again in, but coming straight to Perryman. And now to Evans! Oh, a great save by Ferguson! Bottom club Sheffield Wednesday against Arsenal. Oh, a good ball for Kelly. And a good shot too. And top club Everton against Derby. The man with a powerful shot is spoiled. We're now in injury time in this first half. And beautifully saved again by Green. And you can add to that a complete slow motion rundown and a good look at your letters this week with goals that I know are going to thrill Arsenal and Chelsea fans. Also a look at the Brentford side of the early 1950s and we'll explain why a little later on. But now it's action from White Hart Lane. Spurs against West Ham. Two London sides, both struggling a bit now, but for different reasons. Spurs because they're badly hit by injury. And their team today is without four recognised first team men, England and Collins among them in defence. But their absence gives another chance for that versatile defender, Philip Beale. He wears the number five shirt, but there's certainly a lack of inches now in that Spurs defence today. It's a different story with West Ham. They claim that they're playing well without luck. Now they're without their number five, Stevenson, and Bobby Moore takes his place. And restored to the attack at number 11 now is John Sissons. It's been an unsettling season for him, but this surely is his big chance. So the teams are out, and now we're all waiting for referee Leo Callaghan of Wales, one of the very best. Also waiting, sad to say, a very disappointing crowd of 28,000, no doubt thinned by the demands of Christmas shopping. So Spurs then defending the goal to our right in white to kick off. The lights on at the very start on this rather dull day. And dull certainly is the word for the form that West Ham have been showing, or at least the results that they've been getting. They've lost their last four games, although they've been saying they're playing well. And there is this, even a threat of relegation, beginning to appear towards Upton Park. They are really in a little bit of trouble, and this really is a critical match for them today. They've already lost to Spurs, of course, at Upton Park with a goal by Jimmy Pierce, but now it's Peters for West Ham. Brooking making a dash down the right, and Hurst trying to turn it back for Redknapp, and Knowles turning it into touch. Spurs very badly hit by injury without England, Gilzean, Chivers, and Collins. And Beale, there he is, coming in and getting in before Hurst. West Ham, in fact, now only four points ahead of the 21st club at this moment, Sunderland. Pat Jennings. Powell beating Greaves. Knowles. And Morgan keeping that in very neatly. Greaves. A little bit of acceleration past three men and Moore coming in. Johnson to Kinnear. And now Perriman. Got it across well, and Ferguson really had to stretch for it. Good work there by Perriman, who's done some good work in midfield already. Really a dogged little player. Now Hurst to Brooking. Redknapp outside. Peters had gone storming inside as well. One for Redknapp to try and get inside. And he has, but he couldn't hold it. But it's a corner there into West Ham. Redknapp with it. Peters going in. Sissons looking for it, taking a little too long. And now a throw to look for Greaves. But in fact, finding only touch. <laughs> 
Roque. Kinnear to cut it out. And Neil Johnson, some running repairs on his boot. These boots that are almost like slippers these days, it is a hazard that they do come off rather more easily. Moore keeping a very close watch on Pierce. So difficult to move that ball about with any speed in that uh, centre of the field. It really is very heavy indeed. The ball out of place as the linesman. Mr. Callaghan hasn't spotted him. The linesman's put his flag down. Now he's put it up again. And so it's a throw. Greaves a little bemused by it, but in fact the linesman had his flag up when Mr. Callaghan didn't notice it, put it down again. That's that boat Mr. Callaghan turned around. Hurst misjudging it. Beale finding Knowles. And almost getting himself into trouble with Redknapp. Now Evans. Knowles. Evans again. Knowles. Once more to Evans. And Moore again in, but coming straight to Perryman. And now to Evans! Oh, a great save by Ferguson! And a very good shot by Evans! Ferguson really covers some ground there, and... Uh, it really was an excellent piece of goalkeeping because he wasn't content just to stop it, he held it as well. Now, Boyce to Howe. Peters, Brooking, Howe. Redknapp, Boyce inside him, good neat build-up here by West Ham. Howe to curl one, Hurst to come towards it, take it on his body, into the path of Peters, and there, and it's there by Peters. Eleven minutes gone, and what a ragged goal it was, but it was a priceless one for West Ham. Jennings was somehow rooted to the spot, with the ball just dribbling in off that post. So West Ham a goal up. Bobby Moore, who would have to watch Pierce very closely, he knows it. It's not too often that West Ham have scored goals away from home in 11 away games this season. Before this one, they scored seven goals. Steve Perryman. Mullery. Mullery's got some shouting to do, some marking to do, some fighting to do. Brooking. Still Brooking, he slipped his man very well, and almost slipped Kinnear. Moore on his body. And a foul given against Evans on Sissons, free kick to West Ham. It looks as though Frank Lampard's going to take it. Peters Hurst, Redknapp and Brooking all in the area and plenty of white shirts to mark them. Peters going in, getting ahead to it, can Hurst also? Number two by Hurst! 2-0 to West Ham and only 13 minutes gone. And there was always a suspicion in this Spurs side that there might be a lack of inches at the back without England and without Collins and there most certainly it was proved. Well that really is tremendous encouragement for West Ham who've been going through such a bad spell.
pass. Jeff Hurst's 11th goal of the season. And now Sissons. Well, West Ham have been protesting for the last few weeks that uh, the results that they've been getting in no way are indicative of the form they've been showing. And now it looks as though things are beginning to go their way. Red map back to Ferguson. Bobby Moore. Mallory. Evans. Mallory again. Morgan. Greaves. Pierce playing a 1 2 with Greaves. Bonds coming in. Pierce. Down he goes. And he's given a penalty. The referee has given a penalty for that foul on Jimmy Pierce. Get away, says referee Callaghan to Ronnie Boyce. Greaves is the man who takes them. And Greaves is a man who rarely misses. Ferguson is the man who's got to face him. shake his head because it isn't very often that Jimmy Greaves misses penalties and he had Ferguson going the wrong way and he couldn't have missed by a narrower margin than that just clipping the outside edge of the post there now Jimmy Greaves a very unhappy figure it certainly isn't Tottenham's day Now Kinnear. Moore, very confidently a long one back to Ferguson. Now Pierce. Johnson. And a foul given against West Ham for the foul by Lampard. Kinnear to take it. Evans has gone right up into the box. Mallory too. Joe Kinnear with the kick. Four Spurs. Perryman chasing it in. A very brave chase by Perryman because Boyce was really belting for him. And a foul given against Knowles. Peters taking it quickly for West Ham. Brooking. Knowles struggling to get back. Brooking still going on towards the near post, and Hurst couldn't quite get to it. Brooking fighting hard, finding Redknapp. Now to Peters. Redknapp. Aim towards Hurst again, and very nearly getting through to him. Perryman to Knowles. Greaves trying to shake off Howe, and Greaves away, only more between him. Howe going back, pulling him down, and go on, says the referee. It's a very dangerous piece of play by Bobby Howe that could so easily have 
with a slight misjudgment of being the second penalty for Spurs. Moore getting it away, looking for Hurst, and Hurst finding Beal with him. Cyril Knowles to Morgan and Knowles to place one again now for Morgan to race onto. Moore trying to cover him and Moore did well there. Good control and a cool head and a neat pass to Boyce. Peters now for West Ham to Redknapp. Inside to Boyce. West Ham now beginning to turn it on just a little. Peters with the throw. Hurst coming for this one. Trying to get away from Beal. And what a beautiful pass to Sissons. Lampard, one to get Brooking now racing on. Sissons with a shot and a good save by Jennings. Moore beating Pierce. Lampard again a little bit lucky. Hurst getting up. Setting Brooking away. Brooking very nearly got to it and a very hefty back pass there from Beale. Bonds in fact playing it straight off to Pierce. Now Morgan for Spurs. And getting it across very well. Johnson at the far side. That was a very good run indeed by Roger Morgan. Now Mullery. Kinnear up in support. Here's Kinnear. To Mullery. A little curl of Greaves going in with his head. And saved by Ferguson. That would almost have been in fact a museum piece because it's not often that Jimmy Greaves scores with his head. So close then. <laughs> Funneling back now, Hurst and Beale looking for this one. It's Hurst who gets to it. And then Mullery. A good strong dribble here by Mallory and a pass that looks for Pierce. Now Morgan. Played inside for Mallory again. Just a little too ambitious there by Mallory. So many West Ham defenders were looking for him. But now it's Knowles. Pierce. Oh, a cheeky little back heel to Mallory. And Johnson not quite able to rise high enough for it. Sissons away. Perryman cutting it out. Johnson, Perryman, oh through to Greaves with a fair bit of space, Jimmy Greaves, oh trying a one-two with Pierce, when it might have been better for Greaves to go on and shoot. Redknapp now to Brooking, Boyce, Cut out by Mullery and as well because Peters was lurking on the blind side of him. And a very cool piece of play by Mullery back to his uh, goalkeeper Jennings. Now Kinnear on the break. And that really is a break. With plenty of men up for him too. Greaves among them with his head. Well, there really is no time to stand back and look at your work because this is flowing so much from one end and then to the other that it's West Ham now with Sissons. Boyce. And that's a little too hard even for the willing Brooking. Well, it's a really exhilarating football for the crowd this afternoon. Not the biggest of crowds that you'd expect for a derby game, but I suppose it's uh, Christmas shopping has probably a little bit to do with it. A 
Greaves went tumbling, but Pierce went on with a shot. Remembering, of course, that it was Jimmy Pierce number nine who's been shadowed so closely by Moore. It was Pierce who scored the only goal at Upton Park when Spurs won 1 0. Knowles and Moore again getting in before Pierce. West Ham will look just that little tighter at the back than uh, Spurs this afternoon. But in all honesty, both sides are in the right frame of mind. They're really attacking and putting on a wonderful display. Some really exciting football. How? And there goes the whistle, in fact, at the end of a very satisfying first half indeed in which West Ham have taken this two-goal lead. The first one by Martin Peters, number eight, and the second one by Jeff Hurst, both coming in the first quarter of an hour. Spurs having missed that penalty through Jimmy Greaves, still to come, there's Greaves, still to come on the programme. Highlights from other league games, but the half-time score here at White Hart Lane is Spurs nil, West Ham two. Stay with us for more soccer in just a couple of minutes. So West Ham kick off the second half, Spurs these two goals down, and in fact Spurs have, before today have played four games against London opposition this season, and they've won three of them all away, and they drew 1-1 here with Chelsea, so they dropped only one point against London neighbours this season, they're in terrible trouble of dropping another two today, these two goals down. But now it's Greaves, to Pierce. And Jimmy Pierce with the throw for Spurs. Brooking, finding Sissons. Hurst dancing into the middle. This may well go into the feet of Hurst. Oh, and he got a shot in as well. But it was covered very well indeed by the young number six, Ray Evans. There he is, number six because even though Hurst was falling, he was getting in a shot. So it's a corner to West Ham. And the tempo of the first minute or two of this second half, exactly what it was throughout the whole of the first half. Peters going in. And Lampard looking for Sissons, a corner claim West Ham, but a goal kick, says referee Leo Callaghan. And so it's a goal kick for Spurs. Here's a chance and a good save by Ferguson. Pierce really pounced on that error by Moore. It was a bad error. And Ferguson saved really superbly. And now Peters. West Ham almost idling forward at a leisurely pace. Voice. And Kinnear taking it away, losing it almost to Peters. The feet are going in. And the whistle still hasn't gone. Something like the Eaton Wall game at the moment, but finally it's Jimmy Greaves. To Neil Johnson for Tottenham. Pearson and Morgan are up. Here's Greaves again. Johnson. Once more to Greaves. And finally Perriman going in and now Greaves! 
Shilgreaves just passed. Pushed aside by Ferguson. One of the qualities of Greaves is to get in a quick shot when there isn't very much time. And that he showed then because again he was being very heavily shadowed by West Ham defenders. But he strikes the ball so quickly. Now Kinnear. Out to Pierce. A low and a hard one and Ferguson body behind it. Redknapp. Bonds finding Peters. Oh! Johnson going in and catching Peters' boot quite accidentally. Boyce and Peters going on with his head. He ran a good 30 yards there, Peters, to get to that one for Brooking. Moore. And Lampard. Hurst again trying to shake off Beale and the ball hitting Beale in the back. Pierce, Bonds and Greaves tackling back, taking it off Bonds, finding Mallory. A switch by Mallory towards Morgan. Certainly no lack of determination about Tottenham. Knowles. Greaves trying to get under it, Greaves! Oh, and still can't get it in. Bobby Moore claiming, I think, that Greaves was offside. But the game is going on, and that really was a miss by Greaves. Well, that picture of Greaves tells its own story. He'd done all the difficult work, Jimmy Greaves, in controlling that ball and just couldn't do the easy bit. Plotted out there by Bobby Howe, and I suppose that's the job really that Bobby Howe is supposed to be doing today. Johnson shaking off Lampard's challenge but it was an unfair a very vigorous one by Lampard penalized by referee Callaghan Mullery with the free kick for Tottenham Johnson shaking off a couple of challenges pulled down accidentally there by Lampard but pulled down he was certainly enough to warrant uh, a free kick And certainly Spurs beginning to pressurise this West Ham side. Brooking, Peters, Boyce and Sissons. Reading from the left. Greaves a little chip. Morgan to flick it back to Perryman. And in goes Evans. And in goes Greaves against the post and behind. Well, the angle couldn't have been any sharper than that. And Greaves very nearly made the most of it. And after some of the misses this afternoon, he would have dearly loved to have seen that one go in. And I'm sure he wouldn't have been alone here at White Hart Lane this afternoon. Ferguson with the kick, then. Funny old kick, but it finds uh, Peters. Perryman. And now Greaves off again. He's shaken off how? A shot just passed! I suppose with any degree of luck, 
And with any of his old deadly finishing, Jimmy Greaves might have had three or four goals here this afternoon. In fact, all season, he scored only seven. And you can't get more ungreaves like than that. So that's how it finished. 2-0 to West Ham, their first away win of the season. And really, there wasn't a great deal of incident after that. Martin Peters did have his name taken for throwing the ball away after a free kick had been given. I gather, incidentally, that's the first time that Martin's had his name taken in six years. But, of course, the thing that all Spurs supporters, I suppose, were going home last night saying, if only Jimmy Greaves had been in his old and greatest form, this is a match that we would have won instead of lost. Now, Jimmy, is this a view that you share? Well, I think the crucial thing was missing that penalty because Spurs battled on gamely all the match from 2-0 down. If that had been slotted home, they would have been 2-1 down, and I reckon they may have got the goal that they needed. And it was an extraordinary miss because, uh, it's, as you will see here, it's only a fraction outside the post, and Jimmy sends Bobby Ferguson the wrong way and just gently glides that ball, supposedly for the far corner, and it shaves the post as it misses on the outside. And that with Ferguson stranded on the other side of the goal, and you can see, of course, um, really the, the demoralising effect that had on the Spurs players, with so many of them young players, really, reserves playing in the positions of the stars that they were replacing, and I think that did affect them. In fact, Bill Nicholson uh, offered some encouraging words for Jimmy afterwards. He said at least he is still fighting and getting into position where he can miss the, uh, miss the chances. Yes, I think um, perhaps we, we've been too critical of, of the fact that he just threw away chances in that game because he made several splendid attempts to score, and uh, as you so rightly say, he's still getting there and hitting the ball, but it just won't run in the net for him at the moment. Just there's the first example. This is the worst miss, I think. Although you could say, to say that a miss, I think that's a bit critical again because it was a first class save from Ferguson. This one, as it comes across for a header, you'll see him go up here and he's struggling a little bit to get his header in, but at his very best he might have glided that into a corner, but I don't really think he had a clear header. Now we see, people say he hasn't got a right foot. Now we begin to see two or three chances that he has, one after the other, where he really shows that he can hit the ball with his right foot, but it just isn't his day. There he is clipping it perfectly out to Johnson on the wing, comes back to him, beautiful bit of grief skill there, and off he goes. Now just watch this. Bang! That wasn't so far away from the far corner of the net, or the near corner of the net, but again a good save from Ferguson, who, who had a splendid game right throughout the match. We pick him up again. Again the Greaves right foot, supposedly called the swinger. Look at that control. There it does look a swinger, but I think in fairness to Greaves, only he could have made that chance for himself with that superb control. And once again we see um, a right foot shot. This a really fierce one into the side netting, but it's a very bad angle. There he starts it off with the chip, floats away to the right hand corner of the goal. Now look at that angle. He hasn't got much to shoot at and he was only six inches out, but that's what's happening to him at the moment. And finally, he makes a splendid shot across the goal with his left foot, which really had all the Greaves power and venom, but it wasn't Greaves' day. And look at that, a beautiful shot shaving the far post. Now, the big match has been to Tottenham three times this season, and three times we've seen the Spurs lose. No wonder yeah. Bill Nicholson was saying last night, don't bother to come again. <laughs> but in fact, you were very critical of the Spurs the last time you were there, Jimmy. Uh, do you still feel the same way? Well, I, I felt that, that you know, tactically it wasn't a mystery that they, they weren't winning, and, and I said so. But yesterday I thought there were some encouraging things with lots of reserves. I mean, there wasn't a centre-half on the field yesterday, not Spurs nor West Ham, with due respect to the way both the, the boys played. But um, with the Spurs side, Jesse, Mallory proved again what a splendid performer he is over 42 matches. He's so hard to knock off the ball. He was always in the game, although rallying his troops on, although they were 2-0 down. Uh, and Steve Perriman impressed me more than ever. I think there really is a fine there. And to call him at 17, because he does dispute possession of the ball, gets in, fights it and wins it, to call him a physical player, uh, I think it doesn't do justice to the fact that he's got a very alert uh, football brain. I think it's a real promise. I only hope he doesn't burn himself out because he's battling as hard as anyone in the side. And on that mud, yes, it wasn't an easy thing to Let's do. Let's look at West Ham now, Jimmy. Uh, they've been saying for so long they've been playing well without any of the luck. In fact, the breaks began to go their way yesterday. Yes, they started off very well. I thought we were going to have 10 goals from one team on the big match, the way they started. Um, the first goal was a real beauty. They win possession here, and it's a perfect West Ham passing movement. There's Ronnie Boyce, who came in and had an excellent game, came back into the side yesterday and was a real driving force in the middle of the field. There's Howe, uh, Brooking rather, slips it to Peters and gets the return. Laid back to him again, it is Howe. Pushes it out there to uh, Harry Redknapp, who gets a touch. Lovely passing movement, very fluid, working their way up the right-hand side of the field. 
And here comes the cross, and you'll see Hearst now moving and showing that he can make goals for other people, laying it back beautiful. And as the shot comes, just watch where it goes, straight through the middle of Beale's legs, right through the centre there, and those of you that were blaming Jennings may realise why it was that he got no sight of that ball and how it is that sometimes you can score goals with a, a mishit shot, really. In fact, there were so many passes there, I think we'll have to come back to that at the end of the programme <laughs> and get people to count the passes again. I'm sure it'll beat the record of eight, I think, we've had so far. Yeah. But now let's look at the second West Ham goal. Yes, this really was... clinched it for Yeah, you. good news for England, the Hurst and Peters combination working well. And I think it showed, really, w w the feature of both defences. They were both easily beaten in the air. And, of course, Martin Peters can get up as high as anybody. Just watch the way he rises here. Guides it on, and there's Jeff Hurst, who catches this on the half volley. And it, it, when you talk about shots taking the, the net with it, I think you'll see this one does it there. As it hits the ground perfectly on the half volley, now watch that net bulging, not only on the first touch, but as it hits the floor there, it's still bulging the net at the bottom. All her superb power behind that. The lack of inches in the Spurs defence really telling there, isn't it? Yes, it did. And, and, and it should have told in the West Ham defence too, because neither side was dominating in the air. One quick last word, Jim. West Ham relegation? Uh, not the slightest chance of West Ham going down. The, uh, the, the boys who I've been critical of not tackling tackled yesterday. Sissons and Redknapps and things like that. And there's enough skill there and there's enough uh, intelligence there to keep them where they want to be. Well, a cheerful Christmas note there for West Ham supporters. But now we turn on to the second match on the programme today. Uh, the match, in fact, that took Everton back to the top of the first division. Everton against Derby County. The commentator up there is Gerald Sinstadt. The pictures come from Granada Television. And Everton are in the dark shirts. And away, very nearly an own goal. Headed away by Robson. Almost an own goal by Mackay. corner inside 60 seconds for Everton. steps up already the leading scorer in the first division with 15 goals five goals from penalties already this season Joe Royal and saved by the goalkeeper but by Green what a great save So, Joe Royal, the man with a powerful shot, is spoiled. We're now in injury time in this first half. And beautifully saved again by Green. Joe Royal will still be saying to himself he should have put that ball a yard wider. But he hit it very hard and low. And now it's half time. Jackson. Lost his man well. Morrissey's head out. And is that a penalty? No, it's a corner. The crowd claiming a foul there by McFarland. Ball set sprawling, but it's only a corner. Little Allen Ball with the corner. goes Royal, Green's fists are higher, and who's under this one? Green again, helped away by Durban, and now by Webster. Royal for Morrissey, Kendall, oh and again a great save by Green, what a fine save, Kendall really thought he found the mark then, what a goalkeeper this boy is. 8,000 pounds from Rochdale. Just over 10 minutes left. Not long if they're to get this goal they so desperately want. And the ball's running loose somewhere there. Kicked off the line. Off the line by Robson. 
second time he's cleared off the line in this match Walker another corner all to take it once again Lebone is up in the penalty area is Lebone coming for this now Newton shot that was his ball coming in and a great save again by Green Kendall ball Kendall going again and he can't get to it cleared by Walker Green for once committed himself without getting the ball very courageous dive five minutes remaining and still no score and that missed penalty or rather that penalty save by Green from Royal begins to assume even greater significance Bone to take this free kick for handball. And Jackson is flat out. And there's a there's the goal! Scored by Ball! Alan Ball scores, Jackson is still flat cold. So some incredibly brave Derby County defence and relief on every Everton face. But that goal so near the end, enough to take them back to the top of the first division. Now time for some of your letters. And some of you were disturbed last week uh, when the commentator in Yorkshire should mildly query the referee's decision at Leeds uh, when they had a goal disallowed against Sheffield Wednesday. I'm sure it was an honest opinion. But Mr Raymond Bailey of Ashton Surrey and John Shepherd of Beaconsfield, Buckinghamshire, both felt that the ball was in fact over the light and the referee right when Billy Bremner crossed it. Here we go in slow motion. Remember, the whole of the ball has got to be across that line. Well, was it? You make up your own mind. The referee made up his on the spot there. Terry Cooper now coming in, getting his head brilliantly to that ball and scoring. That was in the first half. In, in fact, it didn't matter too much because uh, Leeds scored two in the second half to win that game. But now we have something to cheer all Chelsea fans. Not that they need very much to cheer them these days. They're going so well. But Miss Calliope Dracos of uh, London SW20 says what a pity that uh, Charlie Cook's shot is always hooked off the line in that opening sequence that we had at the uh, start of this season by the West Ham defence. Couldn't we see a Charlie Cook goal? And young Mark Sharples of Hampton in Middlesex, he wants to see a Cook goal as well. Well, of course, Charlie scored for Chelsea against West Bromwich Albion on the big match earlier this season. And as a little Christmas extra, we'll give you two goals from that game. A goal made by Charlie and a goal scored by Charlie. Taking on Cantello, attacking him as he ought to. And Osgood in! A great goal by Osgood! What a fine header by Osgood! Chelsea's corner then, right on half time, Peter Hausman with it. Webb right up in the six yard box. And Osgood going in, Cook! Number two, Charlie Cook! In fact, that Charlie Cook goal also answers a query from Mr. Bullman of Benfleet. He wasn't sure whether Charlie caught it on the volley or the half volley. Quite definitely, he caught it on the half volley. The next one comes from John Connolly, aged only six of Seven Oaks in Kent. He was thrilled by a John Samuels goal earlier in the season against Manchester United at Highbury. I think with a lot of other people as well. Could he see it again, he says. Yes, John, you can. Aston. And now caught for Arsenal. Rice in now for Samuels. Still Samuels and he's got a bang on him! Oh, magnificent goal! John Samuels! His first goal of the season! And a very good one too. Remember we're running a Golden Girls competition this season. I wonder if that one's going to qualify. The last one comes from Mr Jay Hawks of Southall in Middlesex. To settle a pub argument, he says, would you please ask Jimmy Hill if he ever played in the same Brentford team as Tommy Lawton and the West Ham manager Ron Greenwood? Well, Jim? Well, Mr Hawks, I did play with Ron Greenwood for Brentford in the early 1950s. They were great days. They were in the second division then, and Ron Greenwood claims he taught me all I know about football. Uh, there, you'll see me sitting down there. You can see from that picture... Uh, what it's like to be young and why I've grown the beard since. And we go across to the top left there to Ron Greenwood, looking very young and handsome, and for a bit of nostalgia along the team, Freddie Monk, Alf Jeffries the goalkeeper, Roddy Monroe, Tony Harper, and Captain Tom Manley, and down to Johnny Payton, uh, no name there of course, Tom Garnies, 
Billy Dare and finally Jack Goodwin, the outside right. But what about Tommy Lawton? Um, you would ask that, Brian. Actually, I, nobody would believe it, of course, but I did play for Brentford before Tommy Lawton. In fact, he came the week after I left, and I remember it particularly because they had Lord Gort down to be introduced to the teams before the game. You don't do yourself any justice, Jim. But in fact, they had a celebration at Brentford yesterday as well. George Sands, the sports editor of the Middlesex Chronicle, was watching the 800th Brentford game in a row. A really tremendous record. In fact, he's only missed two since 1933. There he is on the right, the gentleman in the spectacles, receiving a celebration cake from the Brentford chairman Walter Wheatley. I can only say from the big match Mr Sands that we hope that you're reporting and watching Brentford next season in the third division. Now our last match on the program today Sheffield Wednesday against Arsenal up there at Hillsborough in the snow. The commentator is Keith Macklin. The pictures come from Yorkshire television. I'm afraid for those of you with black and white sets it's going to be a little difficult to uh, distinguish the two sides. Arsenal are kicking from left to right. They have the badge on their shirts and some of them have a light ring around the top of their stockings. I hope that helps. Neil. Robertson again. Caught. Jimmy Robertson getting the luck of that one from Jerry Young. John Radford. And goal number one. Samuel scores. Jimmy Robertson's determination won that ball. As it came across in this snow-covered goal mouth, it was John Samuels with a low shot that puts it wide of Springer in the 27th minute to give Arsenal a 1-0 lead. Now into the second half. Oh, poorly placed free kick that was, but when does he still have it? Tommy Craig. Nice play by Craig for Will Smith. Flicked on. Coleman getting across the line of that ball. Will Smith coming up, not quite getting hold of that one. On target, but rather slow. Coleman. These two little number 11s having a real do this afternoon. Wednesday, Wilcoxon. Good header by... Is that Craig or is that Pugh? He's hurt himself. It looked like Craig from here, but he certainly hurt himself going in for that one. There's Pugh, it must have been Craig. Peter Simpson with the kick. <laughs> Kelly pushing it through. Sinclair. Armstrong. Oh, a good ball for Kelly. And a good shot too. Peter Springett, nice save by Springett, that was a testing one from Kelly. And Tommy Cray has room and the ball under control. Pushing it up for Coleman. Craig with the throw. Back. Will Smith. Jerry Young. Will Smith. Jerry Young, is this going across the middle now? Up. An attempt by Whittam, a complete miss kick, but still hovering around the penalty box in the six yard line. And a free kick to Arsenal. Handball, I suspect, there, because as the Wednesday player went down, he appeared to shepherd the ball. Shepherd the ball with his hand. There's Jackie Sinclair penalised in the box. He's now moved over and changed places with Coleman. Makes some good strong header. Find Sinclair. Sinclair still with it. Going on the outside of Robertson. Across goes Terry Neal and takes Sinclair down without benefit of ball. That will be a free kick to. Sheffield Wednesday, Neil went in hard for the tackle there and caught Sinclair. Upended him. Free kick to Wednesday in a dangerous position, almost on the line. Tommy Craig to take it.
Wednesday have seven men in the box. Headed away by Simpson. In goes Coleman with flying feet. Doesn't connect with the ball. Jerry Young. Tommy Craig. Nicely slips a hard tackle. And a good ball. It's Coleman. A lovely header. Oh, what a lovely header by Whittam. Jack Whittam, a superb goal for Wednesday. Well, Whittam is hurt. He put that in the net. So that's how it finished. 1-1, a point for Arsenal. And the second goal of, uh, by John Samuels on the programme today. It does seem that he's taking uh, Bertie Mee's advice and taking on more responsibility around the penalty area, Jimmy. Yes, he's always had a tremendous shot and uh, it seems stupid not to use it. But I was impressed with this goal, um, with the way that Radford fought for the ball and held his opponent on, in fact knocked him on the floor in the end, uh, to provide the shot for Samuels. It's Jimmy Robertson there scooting up the right wing and Jerry Young comes across here and in his determination to go for the ball makes a mistake on the icy ground and there's the Robertson cross coming over and would you look at the way that Radford fights for this, knocks the centre half over, he's not always as physical as this but he does it there and sets it up beautifully, gets out the way knowing that all Samuels has got to do is power that into the corner of the net which he does very efficiently. And now the Sheffield Wednesday equaliser uh, in fact, it showed a good little bit of £100,000 form from this boy Tommy Craig that Wednesday bought as a teenager from Scotland. Yes, it was a very deft pass. He, he plays a big part in the game all the way through, and I think that looks to be a, big, a good buy, even at £100,000. He, he, he catches them out by feinting to pass the ball up the wing and then slips it inside. First of all, we can see Jerry Young picks hold of the ball here, number four, and slides it into him. First of all, there's a very delicate little bit of footwork. Look at the way he beats that man with his left foot. Now, feints to go up the left wing, and nobody else sees this pass, but he does. Cut it inside into the penalty area, and it's from this cross that Whittam goes in and heads that goal, giving the goalkeeper no chance, straight into the corner of the net, no possibility of him saving that at all. It was a very well-conceived goal. So Arsenal take a point away from Sheffield Wednesday, which must have delighted Crystal Palace fans as they fight for survival down at the bottom of the First Division. Well, you've had the action, some very good action too, the analysis to go with it, and a little bit of nostalgia as well, and why not in Christmas week. That's all from the big match today. Naturally, all the big match team wish you all a very, very enjoyable Christmas. Hope that you have a lot of good victories in the, in the new year as well. We said we finished with some action, that first West Ham goal to get you to count the number of passes. Remember, the record on the big match is held by Arsenal and Manchester City with eight. What about West Ham? Now, Boyce to Howe. Peters, Brooking, Howe. Redknapp, Boyce inside him, good neat build up here by West Ham. Howe to curl one, Hurst to come towards it, take it on his body, into the path of Peters, and there, and it's there by Peters.